participants wait for two minutes. Dr. Sopan will join soon. Good morning, Dr. Sopan. Yes, sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, 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 clearly. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for delay, actually. Uh... Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. And okay. uh, I think... Uh, wait, wait, uh, one minute. So, Professor, uh, just... Just... Uh, I mean, uh, if everybody is there... Uh, ah, yes, yes, yes. So, I just want to know more about uh, times and... Uh, uh, yeah, I have some slides. So, accordingly, I will just adjust the speed. Okay. You can take the... Uh, to... 19 minutes maximum. Uh, including question and answer. Half. One and a half. Okay, including answer, question and answer. Half. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no issue. Arundhati. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say. Yes, sir. Good morning to one and all for the 14th session. First, I would like to welcome you all and thank everyone for coming. It's a great honor for me to introduce you to today's eminent speaker for the 14th session, Dr. Sofan Fakal. Dr. Sofan is a PhD holder from IIT Bombay, 2012, a senior research scientist, Wokhart Research Center, 2013 to 16, and a research scientist at Glenmark Pharmaceuticals Research Center, 2016 to 20, a senior, senior manager at Fire Pharmaceuticals Research Center, 2020. He has many laurels to his name, which include Reviewer for Royal Society for Chemistry Journal, RSC, keynote speaker at Industry Academia Meet, CDRI NIPER Rai Bareilly 2018, Business Excellence Award at Glenmark Pharmaceuticals 2017, BSc International Award 2012, Academic Unit Representative, Academic Affairs, Chemical Engineering Department IIT Bombay 2010-12, Best Poster Presentation Award in Research Scholar Symposium Research Showcase to Industries, IIT Bombay 2010. Research work recognized in top 14 entries and bagged Bio Encapsulation Research Grant, BRG, in Netherlands 2009. Avishka 2007 Inter University Research Competition and bagged Second Prize Nagpur. All, Indian, All India Rank 99 in Gate 2005. His research and development areas include my, microfluidic devices or systems development, applications in pharmaceutical or biomedical industries, 
complex injectable formulation development liposomes microspheres nanocrystals ophthalmic suspensions iron carbo carbohydrate complexes protein and peptide we welcome you sir over to you sir yeah thanks um, thanks arundhati for a uh, uh, nice introduction and uh, yeah definitely uh, as i mentioned this will be some new for you people uh, because uh, i'm having background mixed background like uh, pharmaceutical and uh, chemical engineering so i will try to cope up with engineers because my background is in pharma and then phd in chemical engineering at iit bombay okay so uh, i just i prepared my slides so that uh, i mean i can easily uh, tell you or uh, explain you so what exactly research we are doing at our pharma industries uh, just the be patient and i will try to make it as interesting as possible from my end uh, whenever you want you just ask questions stop me don't hesitate and ask questions for clarity so i'm just presenting my slides now uh, i think uh, share option is not there uh, can you give me the privilege for sharing arundhati who is hello yes sir yes yeah actually that i am not able to click on share option sir there is an uh, arrow down uh, there if you click you may find it because i guess yeah, i am clicking it uh, but it is uh, not highlighted i am not getting able i am not able to click on that share option so i think one need to assign the privileges just i will try no so pan so no next next yeah after that kelle chida okay thank you thank you very much okay oh thank you इंको मी So meanwhile i'll just share my slides with professor uh, jairam if it is not possible then yes. you can present you yeah, will try right i just shared with you so you can share your slides just minute no again can you hear, uh, see here actually that shared option is not enabled just 
just unit. So, Professor Jaram, just check your email. I just uh, shared my slides. So, from uh, your end, you can present it. Okay. I'll just say, yeah. Is there any technical problem in sharing, sir? Yes, yes, I'm facing this. Uh, the sharing option is not enabled for me. So what we'll do, I shared my presentation to Professor Jairam, so he can present then. OK, OK. Uh, yeah, actually, somebody made me co-host, but still. Uh, you are pressing that arrow button, na? up arrow button. Yes, yes, I'm pressing it, but uh, that share button is not enabled. Oh, like uh, right. Maybe then, sir, you can uh, log out and log in again. Something if if it works, then you can try mm. like that. Yeah. Or better, I mean, uh, uh, Professor Jaram can sh share the slides. Okay. 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 No problem. Right. Yeah, these are glitches, online glitches. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> it's better actually physically we come there and present. But <laughs> yeah. Hopefully next year we can have the similar yeah. program in a face-to-face -face mode. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Good. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, uh just just a minute. I need to set up. Presentation mode is you are already there, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm starting presentation. So, uh, thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, today, as a part of uh, <coughs> drug engineering, uh, ATL or AICT program. So I'm going to present uh, complex initiable formulation development. Uh, I have around 10 years experience industry and uh, uh, total of 16 years in, uh, research plus industry experience, I mean, academia plus industry experience. So, uh, okay, uh, you can move to the next slide. Yeah, next slide, please. Hello, sir. Yeah, thanks. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah. Audible. So, this, yeah, this outline, <clears throat> like uh, introduction to complex injectable, uh, then actually why we are choosing complex injectables, uh, then challenges, particularly uh, in development, or uh, here we can discuss about uh, drug engineering. Uh, the challenges are basically three, uh, regulatory, pattern related, and formulation and characterization. So formulation is actually engineering related challenges. So I will be focusing more on that. Uh, then of course, um, pharma industry, everything is there. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, this is called FDA, Food and Drug Administration. So they have laid down very well defined paths for development. And uh, uh, in general, pharma industry follows their uh, well um, uh, well laid down regulations. So I will just uh, explain how uh, this FDA is encouraging industry academia uh, collaboration and all. And then uh, I will just, <clears throat> um, for example, just un better understanding, I will give one example of complex injectable that is liposomal drug delivery system. So uh, this is actually uh, currently being used for uh, COVID vaccine by Pfizer also. And uh, last one is conclusion. So next slide, please. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so this is just overview of Indian pharma industry. So as you are knowing, uh, India is called as world hub 
for pharmacy or medicines so uh, in, in that uh, if you compare with us so 51% share is there from indian pharma generic companies for us healthcare and worldwide it is more again uh, like uh, rest of the world south, south africa and all so <clears throat> so nowadays um, there are uh, several off patent uh, products are there in general uh, just for your information generic means uh, what we are doing it in india so there are uh, innovator products uh, though few our uh, few of our in companies are also providing or developing innovative product also so uh, but more or less uh, trend is that a us company will provide the reference product or innovator product after their patenting is off uh, indian companies are following and preparing that uh, copy of that drug that is called generic and in that <clears throat> so whatever the complex products are there though patent is off since last 10 years it's very difficult uh, to copy it or to manufacture similar product so what are the challenges and all this is the uh, presentation today i am going to present yeah next slide please i hope i am audible clearly okay yes sir yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thanks so uh, what are complex injectables uh, as of now you uh, all of us have come across injections uh, mostly they are plain solutions colorless water kind of uh, injections or uh, without particles or anything like that so these are plain injectables or simple injectables i can say or conventional injectables and uh, what are the complex injectables so basically complex injectables uh, are designed mostly Uh, most of the time a drug engineering is involved and they are designed to have the better compliance i mean uh, with respect to um, uh, uh, product quality attributes or with respect to product safety or uh, easiness to the patient or we can call it as patient compliance so most of the time uh, i mean you can see uh, this complex uh, doses forms are basically uh, divided into multiple uh, sub types like complex strength complex route of administration uh, even quality uh, as i have already mentioned simple generic you are ab aware about what i am talking this is plain solution or simple solution but complex injector complex generics are uh, they are either containing complex active or whatever we call it as a drug in pharmaceutical industry so drug itself is a complex pro for example proteins are like insulin it's very complex to produce And then complex formulation so mostly uh, here drug engineering part is involved complex formulation so these are having uh, micro particles nano particles drug crystals so like that and uh, most of the uh, industry are focusing on this complex formulations or where the drug engineering is involved and other part like complex route of uh, delivery like uh, suppose you want to deliver it in your local part or something like kidney so that is complex but uh, it's something more complex to the physician not for uh, engineers or uh, developers and of course third last one is compl complex drug device combination so here again engineering is involved and these are in, in fact uh, delivery uh, device is compli complicated complicated here for example there are some nasal uh, dip uh, uh, in inhalers or sprayers like that no so uh, every time it should give the accurate dosing and blah blah uh, these are the complexity with respect to the device Uh, but as a part of this product program i will be focusing mostly the complex formulation or drug engineering next slide please okay just for example uh, i am giving here the type of complex injectables or generics so as i mentioned complex active ingredients uh, most of the time uh, peptides proteins like insulin uh, mixtures or some natural source products are also considered as complex because reproducibility is a problem Uh, then complex formulation, uh, uh, which are as I, I mentioned, these these are liposomes, micro particles, nano particles, these iron colloid particles. So these are used for uh, iron deficiency or anemia, most of the time in pregnancies, and uh, it's very difficult. Uh, uh, your hemoglobin levels become very low, and if you are uh, on tablets, everyday tablets, uh, you, you for one month again still you are uh, having deficient complex, uh, uh, deficient iron uh, deficiency. so there are certain formulations you give once and for three month your iron level will be maintained so that's why uh, there is a complexion uh, complications uh, not complications complexity in uh, that active and we are conjugating it with the uh, some carbohydrates 
and also complex route of administration uh, locally acting as i mentioned kidney and all things and last one is the drug device combinations next slide please <clears throat> okay and why uh, companies are focusing for this so as i mentioned there is me too generic uh, lot many players are there for plain injectable solutions uh, in simple solutions nothing is complicated just uh, mix uh, dissolve the active uh, ingredient and it is ready for your injection um, just you have to maintain the sterility and all of course and of course uh, a price is very high for uh, complex things because development involves lot many uh, controls and timelines uh of course as i mentioned there is a great patient compliance and uh, nowadays a lot of our companies are preparing uh, uh, more suitable uh, advanced drug deliveries for india market and of course world market also and also uh, to neutralize um uh, like me to space uh, to have the more margin over the other companies Com there are uh, fewer competitors for uh, these complex uh, injectables <clears throat> and of course um uh, nowadays uh, most of the companies including foreign or uh, mncs so they are focusing mostly uh, now these complex injectable uh, drug products and compared to like uh, oral solid drugs like uh, tablet capsule and all their share is declining because nowadays biologics drugs are coming in picture so though we are um, uh, behind and some 10 or one decade uh, than other uh, western countries so now uh, at india we have 10% biologic share and 90% uh, nc or we can call it as chemical entities but now uh, future is changing so uh, next decade will be for biologics so biologics means uh, for example uh, insulin is a biologic product so we cannot manufacture it in lab so we have to i mean we can do it but but, but it is not chemical reaction it is uh, you can say engineering uh, or i can say um, cell biology basic product next slide please okay <clears throat> yes just for example for your better understanding there is one molecule called is uh, called at uh, called as doxorubicin hydrochloride so this is used for ca uh, cancer actually and here uh, for your information i am just uh, 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 explaining conventional versus complex so these are 100 nanometer liposomal uh, lipid balls uh, containing the drug encapsulated drug inside that lipid ball you can say and size is 100 nanometer so because they are they are actually encapsulated in nano balls so toxicity is very negligible compared to conventional one because conventional you cannot in inject more than 10 mg of drug so there is law laws i mean uh, chances are there you will get a cardiac toxicity so like that uh, since it is encapsulated uh, the toxicity is uh, 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 removed now and uh, second parameter is called t half i mean once you inject at at i uh, means uh, how much time your injection is giving effect so uh, just for layman's language i am saying here so for conventional it is 20 minute only but for this it is 50 hours complex uh, uh, formulation and of course site specificity i mean or targeting so you you are aware ki we are saying <clears throat> uh, treating cancer is very difficult because cancer cells are our own cell and your drug molecule don't or medicine don't recognize whether it is cancer cell or it is a normal cell that's why you are saying that uh, if you are injecting or, or treating the cancer patient uh, he is facing a lot of problems health related problems all hairs will be going off and he is feeling lot of many heats and toxicity so this nanoballs particularly they are targeting only the cancer tissue this so that is the major advantage uh, i am saying like compliance to the patients and that is reflected in cost also you can see here um the cost for conventional is 5 to 10 dollar only but for this complex uh, lab consumer formulation it is about 1200 dollar just for your reference i am highlighting here similar thing is with amputation it is same formulation again liposome and uh, below is uh, i mean uh, uh, the nano crystal as i am talking so compliance point of view we can see here so duration for conventional is one day tablet and for this complex injectable it is 90 day so this is used for psychiatric patients and it is not possible for okay. psychiatric okay. patients yeah the, does it have somebody have question no sir 
Okay. Okay. Some disturbance is there. Please wait. Okay. 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 Yeah. So as I mentioned, uh, that drug is released for over three months. Uh, with this complex injectable, and same cases is with uh, trimethylone. This is knee injection. మోడరేటర్ వాళ్ళు వేరుస్తలే ఇప్పుడు వెళ్ళాక మంచి వాళ్ళు వేరుస్తలేము అన్నారు తెలియదు మేడం అన్నీ వేరుస్తలేరు కానీ వినరు yeah professor i think there is an option on screen you can mute others central button yeah you can mute others uh on screen presentation screen it was showing me on center if you are moving cursor it is showing mute all okay. sir we don't have that okay uh, please wait uh, yeah calling for administrator please wait sure ఆయాన్ వాళ్ళు కూడా వస్తున్నారు వాళ్ళ ఎన్ని గేట్ వస్తుంటారు కదా వాళ్ళు కూడా అప్పటికప్పుడే చేసేది అప్పటికప్పుడే అడిగిన అడిగి అడిగి ఫోన్లు అయిపోయినాయి కదా అంత వస్తా వస్తా yeah thanks next slide please okay uh, few of the slides i will just skip faster this is just overview uh, we can move ahead uh, companies are focusing now in complex things next slide please yeah next slide you can go okay <clears throat> yes uh, this is just a chronological order as i mentioned so these are traditional generics uh, low complexity is there uh, this is rnd complexity i am talking about uh, modified uh, release dosis form injectable plain injectable i am talking simple transdermal dermatological complex injectable respiratory because this is containing drug device combination biosimilars uh, what i am talking about is biologics so these are the level of complexity next slide please yeah <clears throat> so uh, these are the challenges uh, just for uh, explaining better so legal for conventional there are no legal challenges but for complex there are a lot of many like citizen petitions patents are there so it's tricky uh, second one is development timelines so for conventional it is less than one year we can develop the product but for this complex it takes around 4 uh, to 10 years for getting approvals or for uh, readiness uh, final readiness of your, of your product 
development to production production level of course a uh, huge part is uh, i mean huge budget is required for clinical studies because this is complex thing and a lot of nanoparticles and microparticles so now you are modifying your drug molecule and modifications not only give you positive effect but sometimes give negative effect also that's why clinical studies are required for complex genetics and of course cost of development is huge for complex definitely a regulatory pathway as i mentioned it is well defined for simple plain or injectables but uh, not defined for complex genetics of course this is the main bottleneck of characterization for conventional it's easy and for complex it's very difficult and manufacture con manufacturing controls uh, like uh, for conventional it's very easy simple you can manufacture within one or two vessels but for this complex things we need to develop uh, automations and lot many in process uh, tools are required lot many engineering controls are required and uh, almost uh, skills are required so which will again uh, invite for huge investment next slide please yeah uh, these are just a uh, few examples like uh, i am saying long acting parental injectables long acting means uh, one month three months six month release also are there so this is from, from patient compliance it's very good i mean uh, uh, having the long acting injectables uh, definitely uh, this is case to case dependent like for, as i mentioned for contraceptions six month or uh, injections are there and what they mostly the engineering part of that uh, drug release a uh, long acting uh, release is that it are they are having micro particles or these are polymeric uh, particles where a drug is actually embedded in polymeric capsules uh, like implants and inserts are there then like liposomes what i am saying uh, what i talk is uh, this nanoballs suspensions are there injectable uh, then uh, again uh, <clears throat> this iron and uh, carbohydrate complexes are there and nano crystals are there and of course for ophthalmic uh, emulsion suspension are there there is new category again in us fda or western countries act are is it is abuse deterrent formulations so these people are having issue with uh, teenagers uh, they are actually using lot many abuse drugs of uh, they are purchasing from pharmacies and uh, uh, using it for their actual doing the misuse so to avoid that uh, uh, us a uh, government is uh, investing almost 50% of their uh, health insurance or health budgets for preparing abuse deterrent formulations they are again uh, new category of complex formulations next slide okay uh, manufacturing challenges just for your uh, information uh, basically we have q1 q2 q3 uh, we call it as qualitative equivalence quantitative equivalence and q3 is a, uh, this is called a physical chemical property equivalence basically if you are preparing uh, generic drugs and uh, uh, just uh, one example i am putting here for your information or uh, for your better clarity um, like for plain simple solutions uh, manufacturing vessels are only 2 to 3 are required for about i am giving a example of liposomal formulation so here 17 manufacturing vessels with skids and automations and of course a uh, lot many uh, in process tools are required um manufacturing steps it's one or two step only but here a uh, lot many steps are involved around five to six five to seven steps are there uh specialized equipments are required for this liposomes uh, there are four to five equipments and of course batch processing time so yeah, it is one to two hours takes for simple solution but five days are required for this nanoballs or like we can call it as liposomes next slide please and uh, second thing is again uh, here uh, as i mentioned micro particles uh, these are actually having complex inactive ingredients i mean <clears throat> here the polymer which is used for um, uh, yeah uh, to control the release or to uh, extend the release is itself complex and the here major problem what we are facing at r&d uh, because everybody is knowing uh, at research and research development we are taking batches in liters only i mean some 2 or 5 liter batch only but for production requirement is for 100 liter or 500 liter like that and what happens that now the scale is changing your lab scale is changing i mean for manufacturing of 1 liter batch it will take say 5 um, uh, hours but for manufacturing of 100 liter batch it may take 50 hours so during that what happens so this this uh, polymer get degraded and whatever the quality of your product manufactured at r&d it is not going to meet when you are producing at a um, large scale 
so here actually uh, your contribution or our engineers contribution is needed we need to develop uh, devices or manufacturing um, setups such that uh, so that scale dependency can be neglect neglected and that what i am talking exactly uh, at the last of my presentation i will present that so next slide okay again same thing uh, when you are changing manufacturing methods you will get the change in your uh, parameters so these are there are three different or uh, four different manufacturing uh, methods are used and every time you will get you are getting different different uh, profiles release profiles what i am talking so that is again uh, one major challenge from engineering perspective yeah that can be controlled again definitely so that part i will cover last at last next slide Yep, and of course, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are certain like regulatory related challenges also there, uh, because uh, there is no clear cut defined path, and uh, everything um, lot many sciences you know all, so it is basically uh, uh, for complex development is basically collaborative research I can say. So here, here uh, lot many industry academia collaboration is are expected because industry is mostly um, driven by time and money of course. And uh, that's why they don't get much time for having core research. But academia people have uh, means like PhDs and masters people. They can take these challenges. Uh, they can develop because academia is more free. I mean, free thinkers are there. They don't have time bindings like what we are having at industry. And that's why regulatory agencies are also in, in, uh, encouraging by providing the grants for academia also. So you will get that all details from USFD website. Lot many grants are available. Crores of grants are available. Just we have to apply and uh, uh, get that grant. So that, uh, yeah, somewhere I have mentioned that side. Okay, next slide. Okay, um, yeah, this is what I am talking, I was talking. So in like example, in 2016, around, <clears throat> uh, sorry, this is something guidances are there. But yeah, uh, 15 grants are actually provided by USFDA. And for your information, one grant contains at least five crore funding in Indian rupees. And lot many uh, uh, IITs, institute like IITs and uh, NIPERS and some government colleges or engineering colleges are also applying for these grants just to resolve issues related to the um, manufacturing. Uh, for example, engineering colleges are asking for a grant. Uh, and uh, drug development pharmaceutical colleges are asking for that grants. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, second major challenge was uh, basically characterization. So here, here again, yeah, academia can help us uh, in better way. So academia can develop the uh, scientific based sound methods to discriminate between uh, uh, how drug is going to behave inside the body. Basically, characterization helps you to determine the drug's behavior outside the body and how it is going to uh, mimic inside the body. Like example, I have I, I showed in last slide, uh, there was a difference in release. Release means what we are doing outside of, uh, in the beaker. Um, <clears throat> we can call it as dissolution testing, basically. We are putting our uh, drug particles or uh, formulation particles and with certain conditions, temperature, RPM, whatever. So drug, that drug amount of drug coming out of that carry I mean, uh, uh, the time dependent is dependence is there. So that is actually getting mimic when you are injecting inside the body. So that's why picturally I am mentioning here, a lot many testing outside bodies, lab testing apparatuses are there, like HPLC, GC and all. And uh, they are mimicking drug performance, how it is behaving, how is it, it is going to behave in body. So there should be some correlation, good sound correlation. And here uh, in foreign countries, lot many this part, uh, whatever ex vivo or in vitro testing part is done by academia. And then the ready-made they are providing to the industry or they are having collaborations. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, this is something regulatory, we can skip. We can skip, next slide, please. Yeah, again, next slide. Uh, here again, I have already mentioned, we need help from academia. Next slide, please. Okay, 
uh, the uh, just short conclusion of whatever i am talking here uh, for uh, challenges in developing complex uh, injectable doses forms so uh, of course uh, there is increasingly crowded traditional drug markets uh, to counteract that we need to focus on complex generics uh, uh, like <clears throat> and also uh, to enhance the compliance patient compliance uh, we need to focus on complex generics and of course uh, there are certain uh, uh, drawback like development cost is time and cost is very high and uh, as their name implies uh, it is generally difficult to establish equivalency as i have mentioned uh, between a uh, reference product and complex copy of that product and uh, this bottom line of this is uh, like <clears throat> a substantial commitment and resources is required of course uh, there there need to be good collaborative research between industry and academia and of course however uh, if we are doing successfully it rewards are very high for just i have for comparison i have mentioned here 5 dollar versus 1200 dollar is the cost of one unit of vial next slide yeah i am just giving uh, for better uh, uh, understanding one example of complex product so uh, many times i have mentioned that nanoballs or liposomes so these are nothing but uh, picturally you can see here so basically they are made up of uh, one basic chemical entity called is called it as phospholipids so for presentation we can see a blue color is head of uh, that phospholipid and uh, that uh, tail is carbohydrate chain and i'm just explaining here top layer is actually called it as bilayer when it comes in contact with water this blue head is hydrophilic or water loving and um, <clears throat> that tail carbon chain tail is actually hydrophobic water hating just to avoid interactions with water they are aligning themselves head head facing outside and tail inside so that water will be now inside and outside of course and it forms structure like bottom what i have mentioned here pink color is head now and uh, to avoid the thermo uh, thermodynamic or uh, free energy <coughs> issues or thermodynamic stability it gets encapsulated or it gets enclosed into nano wall and these are called as liposomes nowadays these liposomes are used by pfizer for covid vaccine <coughs> so inside the center core they are uh, encapsulating a drug or called it as mrna molecules basically and they are acting uh, Uh, uh just uh, to means uh, they are uh, major ingredient of this covid vaccine and carrier is liposome uh just if you are uh, yeah we have sufficient time sir can you please click on this um, link i am i have given here or if it is not clickable at your end copy it and paste it in your browser so it is very good video uh, one minute four minutes video. yeah i know many people might be not having relevant <coughs> background so i'm trying to explain it let's skip ahead and unmute it what's up um sorry what's up yeah oh 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 sorry ah huh? uh is running at my face yeah one minute do that yeah uh, you can basic you can uh, okay go back there is ah uh, yeah uh, first video 6.23 minutes is there no yeah click that Yeah. 
play with the sound. It's commonly produced by glittery evaporation resulting in a thin film of dry lipid. Some solvents could be removed by lyophilization, resulting in a dried lipid cake. An aqueous solution containing water-soluble compounds to be encapsulated is then added to the lipid film or cake to hydrate the lipid and form the liposomes. The aqueous suspension must be heated above the phase transition of the lipids in order for the liposomes to form. The resulting multilamellar liposomes consist of many concentric lipid bilayers, while all or most of a lipid-soluble compound will be incorporated into the bilayers of these liposomes, the amount of water-soluble compound in trap is usually very low because these MLVs have a small captured volume. Very little aqueous solute penetrates the onion-like layers of hydrated bilayer lipid. The captured volume of these MLVs can be increased by freezing and thawing the liposomes several times. Repeated freezing and thawing ruptures and reforms the MLVs, resulting in an increased number of liposomes with fewer layers of lipid and more aqueous space inside each liposome. Thus, the freeze thaw liposomes encapsulate more aqueous solute and often have a multivesicular morphology. The aqueous solute is now uniformly distributed inside each liposome. The thin film method is limited to laboratory scale, while the reverse phase evaporation method can be used to produce milliliters up to thousands of liters of liposomes. Lipid is dissolved in organic solvent along with any lipid soluble components. The aqueous compound is added to the lipid solution. This biphasic mixture is then emulsified by some form of high shear mixing. The organic solvent is evaporated from this emulsion forcing the lipid into the aqueous phase, where it organizes into bilayers and forms liposomes. Additional aqueous phase is added in order to complete the liposome preparation. Again, the temperature of the aqueous phase must be above the phase transition temperature of the lipids in order for liposomes to form. Unlike MLBs produced from a thin film, Liposomes produced by reverse phase evaporation usually have one up to a few bilayers per liposome. Like freeze thawed liposomes, these liposomes can be multivesicular and have uniform aqueous solute distribution. Liposome characteristics can be optimized for a particular formulation by systematically varying the process parameters. Many variations of these methods are described in the scientific literature. Liposomes produced by these methods have a broad like I mentioned there are multiple steps are involved. So this is one step for sizing. Total distribution yeah. of liposomes in the 100 nanometer range is high pressure extrusion through membrane type filters of a fixed pore size. The stainless steel device which supports the filters used for extrusion withstands internal pressures in excess of 1000 psi. Extrusion cannot be accomplished with standard liquid filtration devices. Larger extruders are pressurized by nitrogen, while extruders handling volumes less than one millimeter utilize gas type syringes to generate pressure manually. Extrusion must be carried out above the phase transition of the lipids in the liposomes. In order to achieve a narrow size distribution, the liposomes must be passed through the filters 10 times or more. The liposome suspension becomes more translucent during extrusion, indicating that the liposomes are becoming smaller. The lower size limit of a liposome is 30 to 60 nanometers, depending on the type of lipid used. High shear methods are used to reduce multilamellar liposomes to unilamellar liposomes at their lowest size limit. Most water-soluble compounds must be present at the time the liposomes form to be encapsulated. Some ionizable compounds can cross the membrane in their neutral form. This is doxorubicin molecule, what are you talking about? ...salt form inside the liposome. This remote loading technique allows drugs to be loaded... You can see here how smartly they are engineered now. ...but is not widely applicable. Some ionizable compounds can also be loaded into pre-made liposomes with a pH gradient. In this example, the neutral form but not the charged form of a compound can cross the membrane into the liposome, 
but can't escape due to the high concentration of protons inside the liposome. Lipids organize into five layers due to the presence of water. When the water is removed by lyophilization, the bilayer loses its structural integrity. After rehydration, the liposomes have a different size distribution and have leaked their entrapped contents. Some aqueous solutes, such as sucrose, Okay, you can stop it now. Yeah, uh, go to our slides. So I uh, just wanted to say these, these are actually in here very nicely and there is a lot of science involved in there. Um, uh, designing these drug deliveries. And as I mentioned, there are multiple steps are involved here. So sizing, first of all, uh, formation of uh, bilayers, then encapsulants of drug, sizing, then again, lyophilization and all these things. Uh, purification is also there. So uh, go to the next step. So uh, as I mentioned, this takes around one week for manufacturing a single batch. So here uh, we as engineer can help industry, pharma industry to reduce that time and to avoid a lot many that uh, unit operations. <clears throat> so next slide. Yeah, uh, next slide go. I have already mentioned there hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> Mm, yeah, uh, these are just uh, uh, advantages uh, of these nanoballs called liposomes or conventional things. So it is a, these are site specific, as I mentioned, they are particularly specifically targeting the ca cancer tissues. Then of course it gave, gives extended release, as, as I have showed, uh, it gives up to 72 hours release uh, or delayed release also we can call it as. Uh, these are helping for patient uh, to avoid the toxicity and to get a uh, better compliance. Uh, instead of taking injection every day uh, or a tablet every day, we can delay it uh, for months or uh, like a few weeks also. Uh, yeah, uh, we can skip few of the slides. Uh, just go to next. These are just characterization point of view, which are not relevant. Yeah, as I mentioned, these, these are currently in industry. People are using multiple step things uh, that are shown in uh, the video. Next step, next slide. Uh, yeah, uh, just we can skip few of these slides actually. These are uh, very basic things uh, with respect to, um, of course, uh, how to design these drug molecules. Uh, <clears throat> again, just I will I will just try to uh, spend few moments here. Uh, uh, yeah, so all right, skip. Um, yeah, sometimes we have to design uh, these hydrophilic polymeric chain on the surface of these liposomes. Uh, because our physiology or our body um, expels whatever is foreign material and to fool the body we have to attach this kind of polymer hydrophilic polymers we call it as stilt liposome stilt means hiding or uh, we are hiding that uh, inside this polymeric brushes and body now doesn't recognize yeah it's foreign body or foreign particle and then uh, efficacy or effectiveness is then uh, i mean enhanced uh, next slide Mm, yeah, these are just <clears throat> some of the um, properties. There are certain 25 to 30 different uh, characters and techniques are there. Uh, we are not going through this now. Just next slide. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, I mean, focus on how we as an engineer can help to the pharma industry. Uh, we can go to the, uh, few, we can skip few more of these slides. Yeah, go ahead, go next. These are very basic chemistry or characters and related things. These liposomes, actual liposomes, yeah, uh, sir, just go for previous slide. I will just want to show here. Um, whatever we have seen, these are theoretical images and videos. Just previous slide. One more previous slide. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, this one. Uh, these are actual images. Uh, this is called a transmission electron microscopic images. You can see. Uh, the, the, that scale bar is 200 nanometer. So this is 200 nanometer to our below 200 nanometer single nanoballs are there. And these are dummy nanoballs. And this big image at right hand side is having this doxorubicin, this coffee shape bean, no? So centrally you can see the rod shape thing is there. This is nothing but monomers of your drug molecule got entrapped inside these nanoballs. And you can see these are now protecting, these drug molecules are not free uh, to expose uh, other body parts other than cancer tissue. Okay, and they are protecting there and selectively they are going 
going inside the cancer, getting the cancer tissue or that tumor and releasing their material or load inside the tumor. And now there is a lot many advantages are there. The toxicity related things are negligible. And uh, that bottom left picture is actually having multilaminar. Uh, in both of these are single layer. You can see here multi layers are also there. So multi layer uh, particles are used for different applications, not for cancer one. Just for your, uh, I mean, uh, curiosity, how these look like. Uh, these are all 100 nanometer size particles. You can see here. Actually, they are looking like this. Yeah. Next step. Uh, next slides. Yeah, next slide, we can skip this. Um, yeah, skip this. Um, you can skip this also. These are just this. Next slide. Uh, next slide, please, sir. Uh, again, next slide. I'm talking actually from more or, more or less these are pharmaceutical related things. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, yeah, next slide. We can go next slide. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. Okay, yeah, from this slide. Uh, just I wanted to focus here. What was the background and uh, story I told about developing or engineering these drug particles in pharma industry or uh, at particular R&D, uh, how we as engineer can help uh, for this drug, uh, complex drug engineering or development of these complex drug formulations. <clears throat> so, um, um, so there are definitely certain different uh, techniques are there. Uh, instead of going for this conventional five, six steps, um we can see I, I just for representation i have mentioned here again these are old methods uh, one is of course emulsification uh, by applicate application of some sonicators uh, in probe and all and second is spray drying since are needed in spray drying and we can uh, formulate these particles with in a single step but definitely having good control on these devices is, is very difficult uh, we can go to the, these are alternatives for whatever conventional we are producing here, manufacturing here. So next slide, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these are somehow uh, we can say interesting and some new techniques are there. So uh, the top one I am talk talking is actually is electro spinning. We can call it as electro spinning. So here we are having these amplifiers or high volt source and your drug molecule is uh, yellow. I'm just representing here. Uh, uh, it is filled in syringe and your polymer molecule is now filled in this uh, green color syringe and it is fixed on some syringe pump so that it can have them some control flow rates and we are applying high voltage to the needle. Okay. And based on your voltage, how much voltage frequency you are talk, uh, modulating, and of course the viscosity and flow rate. So you will be able to produce these nano to micro particles ranges here. Uh, definitely these are very new novel and single step technique. And uh, uh, this electro formation is somehow in nascent or at R&D level itself or at academic level, I would say academic level. And th second one, our bottom is actually having this microfluidic uh, devices. So uh, microfluidic devices is actually basically nothing but the full flow chemistry. It is more or less, you can say, uh, fluid dynamic related thing. So here again, same representation is this. You can pass polymer and you can pass drug fluid uh, simultaneously. Or, and again, you can focus it uh, with the aqueous phase or anti-solvent phase. And based around this flow rate, simply we have to modulate the flow rate and uh, concentrations, of course, viscosity and all. And you will be able to produce single in a single step control manner uh, particles. Uh, go to the next step, the next slide. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, next slide, please. I'm not able to visualize it yet. Yep, uh, this is one just example I'm talking here. So same thing, uh, these PLJ micro particles are being produced using this microfluidic technique. 
so you can see uh, your aqueous phase or we can call it continuous phase continuous phase is having nothing but the um, your aqueous molecule and uh, surfactant and of course your dispersed phase or drug phase is there centrally so uh, uh, at bottom picture you can see uh, this 1% polyvinyl alcohol is surfactant in buffer <coughs> or aqueous phase and your uh, polymer and drug in solvent okay and they are mixing control manner here and forming the droplets and these droplets you can see actual droplet in that bottle how they are getting form form here uh, next uh, a zoom picture of that bottle okay and uh, again it was at <coughs> industry uh, academic level only this technique is called it as microfluidic technique basically so everything is done at micron level so fluid behavior at micron level is very different than uh, 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 fluid properties actually very different than uh, at bulk level or, or whatever we are doing in bulk mixing and all no because at bulk uh, there is a lot of turbulence is there but um, at at micro level or micro channel level uh, that uh, turbulence and we have very precise control on mixing and uh, droplet size so next slide please yeah uh, you can say just for your reference uh, one outcome i am just comparing here so left hand side is uh, having simple a uh, bulk uh, emulsification technique and in that we have to purify it i mean we have to sieve that uh, particles uh, above and below or we can say we are using uh, chenni okay so if your target is 500 uh, 50 micron 50 micron you have to sieve it through above particle 60 and below particle say uh, 30 micron whatever in between is coming is picture you can see poly dispersed things are there then they are ag again after uh, having some more processing like sieving and uh, left right hand side is outcome of this microfluidic technology you can see without any further purification step single step you are able to manufacture very uniform particle and this is the crux uh, this is the base how we are going to modulate or how we are going to control the release of this particle so huge difference is there and here definitely uh, this can be done by engineers only of course because pharmaceutical people uh, they are expert in drug properties and uh, of course um, they mo know more about physiology of body pharmacology medicinal chemistry and all this stuff impurity and all next slide please yeah next slide Uh, previous slide please sir yes this is this was actually this is my research slide actually this is from my publication i started in uh, doing this microfluidic technology uh, in 2007 at iit bombay chemical engineering department and uh, this was my paper published in 2013 uh, you can see here a simple i mean um, uh, 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 you can see at uh, middle actually uh, picture so uh, as i mentioned i am i, I am in uh, mixing that medicine in um, aqueous phase or water and this phospholipids in alcohol and i am actually sending through the syringe pumps and at the interface I, it is actually annular now coaxial you can see coaxial uh, bottom these circles are there you can see uh, aqueous phase is blue color and our water is blue and your uh, lipid and drug is red or pink color okay and they are going to mix at interfaces and at interface it forms the nanoballs and this blue color image is actual photograph uh, instead of this alcohol or lipid i use our fountain pen ink uh, just for your representation or uh, picture representation how it looks at our eyes that blue color you can see that mixing regime is increasing here at the end of the uh, tube and these are actually 500 micron channels yeah yeah exactly these are 500 micron channels i can reduce up to 40 micron 40 micron yes and uh, this uh, this article i published in 2013 uh, yeah <clears throat> and now as i mentioned uh, last or this i mean last year pfizer has adopted this technology for manufacturing the covid vaccine basically and means uh, within one decade from academia to industrial level it has been moved now this is something good basically uh, i didn't patent but i published this thing but nowadays in 2020 uh, somebody has patented this uh, technology yeah next slide please 
and this this is actual outcome uh, as i mentioned this is uh, a, a, a means uh, <clears throat> e same i can say environmental scanning electron micrographs so you can see this uh, these are actually from my article itself so output is very uniform around uh, 150 mi 150 nanometer particles are there you can see here i just compared it with uh, two different techniques so you can see uh, say around uh, everything is centered in between say 120 to uh, 200 nanometer basically and for convention technique lot many five to six steps are there and we are not able to produce this kind of uniform uh, single uh, uh, uniform particles so all these five days work needed at our uh, industry that can be reduced to few hours only because i am doing single step thing here and that's why this pfizer has adapted this thing because covid uh, we need lot many formulation a well, lot lot many vaccine shots actually and it was very challenging uh, if we would have proceeded with conventional thing because taking one batch takes around one week but here it takes around few hours only next slide please <clears throat> yes uh, this is just from recent article uh, recent news actually i am for your representation i am showing here uh, these micro devices are looking, these are now parallelized actually. So just for reference, uh, they have mentioned one coin here. Uh, this is the size, very small, very compact. And it, it, is, it is able to produce uh, 100 of liters actually, uh, liposomes or nanoballs. Uh, this is just for your reference, I am talking, giving some news articles. Yeah, uh, screenshot here. Next slide, please. And yeah, uh, this I have, um, as mentioned you, this is being used for COVID vaccine. Uh, this is again, I got from cash. And there are certain articles also uh, where uh, in nature, uh, Pfizer have published. You can see whatever I've shown in my article. Uh, so lipidic phase and aqueous phase, they are being mixed at uh, this micro channels and output is uh, this nano balls having vaccine conjugates actually on surface. Okay, and basically, Coincidentally, same lipid balls are manufactured by Pfizer also. And at the end, uh, I was, I was, uh, NCAP, I was attaching polymer. They are attaching this, uh, basically, uh, peg multi. I mean, this is actual conjugate uh, for forming antibody or antigen. You can say, yeah, uh, this surface, COVID surface, no. These are forming, uh, yeah. And as a bottom, you can say uh, this single channel. They are just parallelize it in multiple. The advantage with this technology, as I mentioned, uh, there is scale dependent issue <clears throat> for our pharmaceutical industry with conventional things. So one liter to 100 liter, I need to again re-optimize everything at 100 liter plant scale. But here, whatever and at r and I can, my, I can optimize on single channel and at production level, I have to just parallelize the channels, keeping all parameters same. I have to just integrate that thousands of channels. And of course, everything will be fitted on the desktop size only, or your CPU size only. That's all, that's all actually. No need for bigger vessels, no need for skids, because of, for just your information, one skid, automatic, automatic skid for multiple controls, having multiple steps, it takes 500 to 1000 crores for under r and at plant level. And that's why they, these complex uh, uh, complex products people are not daring because of lot of lot many huge investment is there. But we as engineer can help these pharma industries by providing such novel technologies. Um, uh, because definitely there is lot many uh, industry a uh, lot many academic uh, uh, efforts are there put here uh, for this kind of technologies. And uh, that's why we are expecting from you in also academic institute also do something like this and pharma indices are welcome i mean they will welcome to procure welcome to call collaborate or welcome to purchase your technology itself so yeah uh, next slide please yeah thank you uh, just we are expecting uh, just pictorial representation is there academia industry collaboration should be there if India want to actually compete with these Western, Western countries. Uh, this is actually my feeling, even in industries, uh, they think academia is waste, uh, they are doing, not doing good things. And academia, uh, they are also have to gear up 
because industries require timelines and academia should be actually adapted themselves to meet the timelines definitely i mean uh, I basically uh, academicians should take some efforts extra effort to have collaborations it will definitely help you to grow if definitely to uh, increase your um, of course funding and all these things thank you uh, if you have any questions uh, session is open now for question answers i try to explain as simple as possible for you people yeah, thank you participants any questions or you can type in a chat box so no questions means all or none either everything is understood or nothing is understood yeah jokes apart yeah somebody is writing now okay i think so there is a no question okay okay Ar uh, arunguti you are there okay on the half of the organizing committee i would like to thank dr sopan given a nice uh, to, uh, nice details on the topic thank you thank you so much sir yeah thank you thank you for providing opportunity okay you can yeah. leave any time sir okay okay thank you sir thank you sir participants we have to join at 3 o'clock for a validity function and uh, after 10 to 20 minutes we will conduct a small test we will send on the whatsapp group link you have to submit it back okay okay thank you